Hello everyone, and welcome back to Shelter 3, where we are working our way through a cave of all places. I'm not exactly sure where it is going to lead us to, but it seems that our very long nose is actually able to sense something on the other side. But I think we might be going in a good direction. It definitely led us through a path where there didn't seem to be a lot of food, but thankfully we found a beautiful valley filled with rhinos and all sorts of amazing cranes, waterfalls tumbling down in beautiful cascades, and several very yummy fruit trees that provided more than enough food to fill all of the stomachs of all of our herd. And we actually still have everybody in our herd right now, which I'm really, really, really grateful for because I know many people have actually not had this much luck in keeping everyone alive. Oh, time for the, the baby to be fed. Let's scoot forward and just wait a minute longer. But even though we seem to just be having a stroll in the park with our pachyderms, in actuality, a lot of people have already lost many members of their herd by now. So I'm very grateful that we've had it so easy, so to speak. All right, where do we go now? Ah, there we go, the Smoking Mountain! <gasps> I see it now! All right, so we are working on the path towards the Smoking Mountain. Let's go ahead and double check where are some fruit trees. There's some over there, but there's a couple over there that I think we can actually reach sooner. So let's head this way. Can we reach that fruit tree? Actually, I don't know if we can reach that fruit tree, but we're gonna do our best. And I really hope that Smoking Mountain is Oh, oh my, that's actually, that's actually kind of terrifying. Is this Majora's Mask all of a sudden? <laughs> all right, come with me, family. We're not gonna run at the moment because we don't have any danger to run from, I don't think. But it seems like this is an area where not a lot of food grows very easily. Yeah, the food that we can get is actually going to be around the corner. Can we go up here? Oh, we can't go up here. Okay, so we actually need to come over into this forest. Alright. I'm sure everything's going to be fine. I hope we did the right thing by going through the cave. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm glad that all of our siblings, our sisters, our nieces, our mother or grandmother, everybody seems to be doing okay so far. And look at us, we're just coming through like wrecking this forest. That is indeed what a herd of elephants will do to a big forest like this. How do we get up there? Well, we're just going to have to push our way through the bamboo forest and find out, it seems. There were so many different paths we could take. I think we could have just, like, gone straight up the mountain. But instead, we decided to go ahead and take this route through the mountain. Let's see. Can we get up now? So close and yet so far. All right. How about now? All right, I think we can get up now. Let's climb on up, push our way through. Ah, there we go. A little push. Ah, there we are. And sure enough, we can reach this fruit tree. So we're going to come over and give it a good bonk. Come along, family. And the fruit has changed yet again, so we have to show them that it is safe to go ahead and eat this fruit now. And get the energy that we need to be able to climb up this mountainside. Let's eat both fruit trees while we're here. To make sure we have enough. Alright, come along sisters, hang on. I've got to give this, good, this goodly tree a bonk. Alright, out of my way family. And... There. All right. Hopefully that will feed everybody enough so that we'll have a lot of energy to be able to get up this little mountainside. 
Sure enough, and there we go. Okay, so let's come up. I don't want to wear everybody out, but we might need a little bit of a run. There we go. And let's see if this triggers any new memories. Where's our baby? Where's our baby? Where's my baby? Oh, there it is. Oh my gosh, it just blended in with the rocks. I was so scared for a second. I thought we lost our child. Ah, no, there you are, little one. Come here. So we need to come up here. Oh, look, it's actually spewing out rocks. It would not be a good time to be an elephant that ends up caught in the middle of a volcanic eruption. Just saying. We've got a family to take care of and goals that we really want to try to live out. All right, up we go. Come on, everybody. I don't want to burn up our energy with running. And there's a daredevil bird flying over the top of the smoking mountain. There we are. Let's see what we can find. Ah, oh, there we go. The next memory. Honestly, we've passed crocodiles. We've staved off hunger a couple times. Everyone's still alive. So I'm curious to see after the lions, the crocodiles, the mountains. What would be the memory that we would have to work with this time? Is that like a mesa? Wow. Okay, so we've made it to the next area. The Smoking Mountain. Can you feel them near? Just beyond these ridges our herd awaits us. Come closer and we'll forge a path together. I think we're almost there. All right. We're getting closer and closer to a larger herd, I think, and reuniting ourselves with a bigger part of our family. And that's how many elephant herds actually existed in pretty good sized family groups for so long. Most elephant families are fractured and traumatized in our modern era. If their memories run long, then you can imagine that there are so many elephants who have seen the biggest arc of tragedy with the most ivory hunting and have seen their family die and they never react well to that. Ah, we're almost there. A storm is coming, Riva, but we must make it through. Past the maze of stone, the rest of our herd awaits. Oh, I think we've just about made it. And as always in a bigger herd, well, your chances of survival grow up as long as there's enough food. Some of this herd may be family that we might even remember. So where to now? Ah, down there. All right, let's see. So past the maze of stone. Well, we'll have to see if... Oh, look at that! Look at the geysers in the distance! Oh, there's a desert. I wonder if we could have come from the direction of the desert as well. And if that would have actually ended up guiding us. So there's more fruit trees down here. So let's rush on down. Because I'm really excited about the idea that we might be coming up on our family herd. Good, everyone's coming with us. And we'll bonk these two fruit trees real quickly. There we go, family. Fill up, fill up, eat up, eat up. And I'll get this one too. There we are, to make sure we have enough. And now we just need to make our way through the maze of stone. So we'll try going from tree to tree and see if those trees are able to guide us safely to the next place we need to go. Or maybe I should save some of the trees if we have big appetites just in case okay 
I just like, oh, the storm. Okay, everybody's still with us for now. So there's a path that way and there's a path to the right. I think we'll go to the right. It looks like there's no more food after this. So even though we just ate, come on family. All right, let's do our best to work our way through here. So a storm. Oh! All right, everybody stay close. It's just a storm, we can do this. I hope we don't lose like one of the older members or younger members to just a sudden spurt of fear. Let's see. Yeah, the path continues on, but there's not gonna be any food, so we might wanna move with caution, not go too quickly. I imagine being an elephant lost in a storm. Yes, plenty of, plenty of path ahead, I see. But no more food, so we'll wanna really try to move carefully. All right. Everybody all together? We're gonna feed the little one, and then we'll move on. Yeah, all of the adults are with us. I think I actually hear other elephants in the distance. That would be really amazing if we were able to reflect on how one of the ways that other elephants... Oh, there's a bunch of bunnies dashing about to the right. Wow. But one of the ways that elephants are actually able to communicate with each other is by using calls that are at such a low frequency that we can't hear them. But the calls radiate out through the, the like the sound waves push out through miles and miles around where the elephant will be calling. And they actually feel the, the vibrations in their feet and their feet help them to be able to triangulate like where the rest of the herd is or to hear the call. And I've always thought that's so amazing that elephants communicate over those vast ranges. We're walking past so many bunnies right now. But I've also always wondered, how, how do our cars, how do the vibrations that we put off of all of our vehicles possibly disrupt those elephants or maybe distract them? Maybe they can hear those vibrations from very far away and it, it's kind of like whales in their sonar. We actually can drive whales mad with the sonar that we have playing from so many different cargo ships and submarines that go around. And I just wonder if elephants might have the same problem with things that make a lot of noise while they're trying to listen and listen and listen for their family. All right, we're gonna need to go around this ridge that's shown up because there's a bunch of boulders in the way. And we'll work our way over here. All right, come on, family. I don't want to wear them out by running, even though it would get us there a lot faster. Because there's no more food. Is everybody still with us? Yeah, everybody's still with us. I think we've done a good job just making sure that everybody stayed together and keeping all of the adults alive, I think, Keeping all of the adults alive definitely helps provide more defense for our young, which is one of the reasons that we're actually working our way over. Stay with me, little baby. Our baby's very, very cautious about risks, and I appreciate that, because it alerts us when something might be happening. All right, you need more food, little one? All right, let's go ahead and provide for it. I think we're almost there though, friends. An elephant baby will actually be very dependent on its mother for a long time. I think it's upwards of almost two years of almost exclusively nursing. It might be a little bit less, maybe 18 months, but a lot of nursing from its mother. They drink milk as we do as infants because they are also mammals. 
and that milk helps the baby grow tremendously. And then slowly and surely it will start pulling down leaves and twigs and trying to eat them. But a lot of that is also dependent. Oh, and I can't I can't sense where the path is anymore. Hmm, my sense of smell no longer works. I'm a little worried about that. How will I be able to guide myself moving forward without my sense of smell? A little worried about that. Alright, hang in there, family. There, phew, my sense of smell came back. That was very concerning. Alright, come on. I think we're almost there, guys. Oh, but I don't want to run because if I run, we'll run out of food. Okay, so we could have gone through the bamboo forest, but I don't mind going the way we did. And <laughs> we're just eating the bushes as we go by. And then I think our family will be here. Did we make it? And we really didn't lose anybody? Because that would be amazing. We made it! Oh! The journey's end. Riva, we've arrived. See how beautiful it is. Come close now. They are waiting. Everybody survived! That is very different than what my friend Stacy had happen. I think she had two elephants left by the time I, I couldn't look anymore and had to like turn my eyes away. All right, let's go. Our family? Oh, you guys. Oh, that's the ending. That's the ending? Oh, what an emotional sucker punch. Okay. Contrary to popular belief, elephant graveyards don't actually exist the way people think they do. But it's easy to say that elephants do mourn their dead. They remember their family. They can be separated for decades and then find one another again. And also, contrary to popular belief, most of the elephants who die don't do so in elephant graveyards. They do so at the other end of a gun. So this is actually the best possible thing we could ask for, for our mother, the former matriarch giving us the final beautiful lessons and how to do our best to try oh how to do our best to try to keep our family safe the places to go she did a wonderful job and the efforts that she put into guiding the herd the places that she showed us where to find food and water would have been passed down to her from her mother and from their mother before them. And on into a long chain. That for many, many thousands of years it would have more or less remained unbroken until the ever-changing landscape that we have now. Until there rose a force so strong that it could sculpt the entire world. And that would be us. So it's going to be so interesting to see the future of elephants, my friends, but what a beautiful story from Might and Delight with the tale of being able to see how one generation is guided, supported, and led by the former. And maybe not all of us are lucky enough to have mothers that could give us such deep lessons of wisdom like that. But I can speak from personal knowledge that there's still hope that one of the best things I think that we all can do is share knowledge about what makes a good life, what makes a good person. 
and what really makes your heart feel full of success and pride. And I know for me that is the hope to leave the world a better place than I ever found it. And the hope that I can share a little bit of my love, my awe, my fascination, my sense of wonder with this world that we all share with all of you, so that together we can try to protect it. And I think one of the most beautiful things that we can do in protecting the planet together, in making the choices, even when they're a little hard, to change our behavior so that we can try to make this world an even better place for everything that lives on it, is the space that we'll be able to give to all of the other species who are our siblings on the only planet that we know where life is, to tell their own stories. I think that's one of the most powerful things we could do. Because I think that all around us are more stories like this, told in the language, in the love, in the triumphs, and the struggles of other species that could enchant us to the end of our days. If only we give them space to be able to tell those stories, and if only we're there to pay attention and listen. Thank you all for joining me on yet another beautiful, very introspective story of life with all of its depths, sometimes its challenges, sometimes its joys, told from Might and Delight here in Shelter 3. If you guys could, do please leave a like for this beautiful story. But most of all, my friends, what I hope you do is maybe go forward in the world and try to make this a better place than you found it too. Give all of the other creatures we share this planet with the space to tell their stories. And just try listening sometimes. Because I think you really will be full of wonder. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.